Hello everyone and welcome to the Speculative Wildlife Research Center, where we reimagine creatures and monsters from all realms of fiction through the lens of speculative biology. Today we will be looking at unicorns, the single horned creatures from European and Asian legend. This one was suggested in the comments by Gargamel Gold, who proposed I do something beautiful for a change, and that's fair. There is no better way to improve than to go out of what you usually do, and unicorns are such fantastic and iconic creatures that there is no better way to go about it. Also, we will be talking not only about unicorns, but the magical and medicinal properties often associated with them, and see how they could be a part of a real living creature. So, without further ado, let's get started. Few animals have captured the eyes of humanity as well as the unicorn, famous for its beauty, and yet doomed to its exploitation by mankind. The unicorn, Genus monoceros, is a member of the family Giraffidae, which includes okapi and, obviously, giraffes. This animal is well adapted to a grazing lifestyle, thanks to its long neck and muscles which allows them to keep an eye on their surroundings even as they eat. Their long, strong legs are perfect for jumping and prancing around their habitat, as well as keeping them away from predators. They tend to stay around well-vegetated areas, near cliffs or mountains, which they can easily climb, steep as they may be, thanks to their cloven hooves, which are common to all other artiodactyls, animals such as goats and deer. Their highly diverse diet allows them to adapt to a variety of environments, on which they will thrive as long as their dietary requirements are met. Although there was a time when unicorns were very widespread, being found all around the south of Asia, nowadays most populations are limited to India and the Caucasus. These belong to two different species, the Indian unicorn, Monoceros tricolor, and the highland unicorn, Monoceros nives. Indian unicorns are characterized by their colorful coat, which is striped in red, black, and white fur, while highland unicorns have a completely white coat. In both cases, the color of the unicorn's coat helps them camouflage in their habitat be it in the vegetation of the prairies or the snowy mountains they inhabit, respectively. Furthermore, highland unicorns have a much denser coat and sport manes and beards that help protect them from the cold, while Indian unicorns have much shorter fur. The unicorn's defining characteristic is their single straight horn. This horn is an ossicon, a bone formation permanently fused to the skull, like that of their close relatives, okapi and giraffes. However, unlike the ossicons of other creatures, that of the unicorn is not completely covered in skin, but extends beyond it to a length of half a meter or more. This horn is used by unicorns for two main purposes, the first of which is defense. When confronted by a predator, unicorns will turn towards it and keep them at bay using their horn. If the predator presses the attack, the unicorn will charge forward, greatly injuring the attacker if its horn connects. The horn's second purpose is digging on soft soil in order to unearth nutritious roots the unicorn will feed on. Because of this, the horn is present both in males and females, with no real differences between them. Since the horn will be worn constantly during the unicorn's lifetime, it must keep growing while the unicorn still lives. This growth is constant, but does not always happen at the same rate. Periods of slower growth, usually caused by seasonal changes in food availability, will form slight grooves on the horn's surface. As the horn needs to grow constantly, 
unicorns must feed on great amounts of calcium-rich plants and will also supplement their diet with wood and similarly hard vegetable matter. From this matter, the unicorn will obtain greater amounts of carbon, which will form a great quantity of carbon fibers along the horn, which help make it harder and more resistant to damage and wear. Due to the carbon-rich composition of the unicorn horn, it has been used since antiquity for its medicinal properties. Properly processed through exposure to extreme heat, the unicorn's horn will be transformed into a material called alicorn, which bears considerable similarity to activated carbon and is likewise used to neutralize poisons, cure from poisoning and overdoses of other substances. It was also used on occasion to treat viral and bacterial infections, as well as other illnesses. The success of these treatments, however, was moderate at best. Given the utility of the horn, unicorns were hunted throughout the world for this valuable material. This carried great danger for hunters, as unicorns are known to be extremely aggressive. This is actually a common feature to most herbivores. Since they require less energy to feed, they have much more energy available for defending themselves from potential predators, and given the enormous risk they face from ignoring a potential threat, most herbivores will treat any intruder in their territory as a predator. As such, lots of lone or less experienced hunters have perished from facing unicorns unprepared. Even surrounding or outnumbering a unicorn will not be enough to secure a kill, as unicorns are quite agile jumpers and will easily outmaneuver their pursuers. If pressed, unicorns can even escape by jumping off cliffs and gracefully climbing down the steep slopes, where predators can no longer give chase. In the end, the method that achieved best results when hunting a unicorn was through skilled maidens that had trained for that very purpose. They would sing to attract the unicorn's attention and remain completely still and serene even while facing its horn, thus provoking curiosity rather than aggression in the unicorns. After a while, unicorns that did not run away would have likely lowered their guard, and then either a well-hidden hunter or the maiden herself would strike at the unicorn quickly killing it to take its valuable horn. Due to this indiscriminate hunting, several species of unicorn have disappeared from their natural habitat, reducing their distribution to the one we have in modern times. However, not all is bad news, as unicorns are now protected by the governments of the countries they inhabit, and hunting unicorns or trading their horns is severely punished by law. And that's it for a speculative biology look into unicorns. Now, I did not intend to end on such a bummer, but the truth is, once I started reading on unicorns, a lot, and I mean a lot of the information on unicorns, was about the medicinal use of their horn and how they were hunted, so I didn't want to leave such an important part of their mythology and legends out of the video. It is almost crazy to think how even animals that don't actually exist fall prey so easily to human greed, to the point that the horn of an animal that, again, did not exist, was so widely traded for up to 8 times its weight in gold. Still, it was really interesting to work on this one. I based the Indian unicorn on an okapi, since many Greek descriptions of the unicorn seem to have a lot in common with this animal, and the Highland one fits a little more the standard medieval and fantasy description of it. I hope you enjoyed the end result. If there's any type of creature you'd like me to give the speculative biology treatment in the show, please sound off in the comments below. Thank you all for watching.
and see you next time on the Speculative Wildlife Research Center.